This episode of Sir Sick Being a Big Smarter is brought to you by Spoonstaff Stories. The show made by Mrs. Sick and voiced by me. And no, when I say brought to you by, I don't mean she pays for it. She hasn't got any money. Go watch it so she eventually will. And because it's actually really good, I guess. Ugh, fine, I'll do some more spirit science, I guess. I swear you lot only like these videos to spite me. Oh well. Gotta appease the algorithm and do something I hate just to entertain you lot. Bunch of gits you all are. If you take white light and shine it through a prism, the light will break into a spectrum of seven colors. All right, who gave him access to a light source? You know that's just gonna lead him to escaping from his cave. And if he gets out, that's just gonna lead to infinitely more silliness. I told you, if you want to keep a pet stupid, you have to keep it locked up and never, ever let it get out, lest it breed and bring even more stupid into the world. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Ugh, did you have to sing that? Like, did you have to do it in a way that's not clearly a joke about how you can't sing? Ugh, cringe. And I suffer from epic cringe. That's why I literally can't go to karaoke unless I am super goddamn drunk already. The second hand embarrassment is real. Of course, when I am that drunk, I do inevitably get up and sing the all time classic love song, F Her Gently by Tenacious D. Goes down a tree at the old people's home, light is out and everything. Aw oh, yeah, Roy G. Biv. Just want to quickly point out that Roy G. Biv is probably the most coherent thing he's going to say for the rest of this series. I really, really wish I was joking. You can do this at home with your own prism, or maybe you tried it in science class at school. Ah yes, of course, my prism that I totally have, because I am a massive wooba who is only happy when surrounded by shiny things. Although, now I am going to have to order one, so I have it for next time, because I like shiny things too. Also. School? Are you saying that your target audience is kids? Because, gross dude. Let them grow up and become idiots without your help. Thank you very much. We familiarly recognize this as the spectrum of the rainbow, or even more familiar... SHINY SKY COLOR! At least that's what I assume people who watch you regularly would call it. While they point, staring slack-jawed into the sky, unable to comprehend what this gigantic semicircle is, and wonder which Sky Daddy sent it as a personal message just for them. Probably something about spending more money on bleach enemas. The basic palette in Photoshop. Um, really? Now, I know what that is, and you clearly know what that is, but even while there are a lot of creatives on the old internets, if even a quarter of your audience recognise that as the Photoshop palette, I would be really surprised. I know it's not really that important, but I think it just shows a disconnect with how reality like is. Scientifically though, this whole prism effect and all of the colours it produces are generally called Newtonian colours, and for the most part are the foundation of the visible colour spectrum. I mean, I can't say I've ever heard them called Newtonian colours, but that is a Newton disc, and sometimes they are called Newton's primary colours. But generally, it's just the primary colours. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But if I'm not, well, it's just another example of this educator's consistent screw-ups. Now, of course, there are way more than just seven colours, especially when you get into different wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah, of course, but there's only one that really matters, and it is both all colours and none. It is the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end of colours. It's that lovely golden brown of a decent whiskey. Really, what other colours do you need? None of them, that's who. And perhaps even different dimensions, Colours, dimensions, same thing really, but I really, really don't want to have to follow you down that particular rabbit hole, because mate, you already have no idea how this one works. Extra dimensions is just going to compound that ignorance by just so many goddamn factors. But let's just, you know, let's stick with these for now. Oh, thank God. I thought I was going to have to start peeling off my own face to get some semblance of sanity. Whew. Might do it later anyway, but you know, just for fun, like usual. The thing about colour is that each one actually has its own vibration. Red has the longest wavelength and the slowest vibrational frequency, and today we generally recognise it as warm and stimulating. 
or as, I don't know, burning and deadly, since, you know, fire hot and red. And as a vibrant colour, it's a good thing for getting attention, so is used as the danger sign. For that, and I'm sure many other reasons that aren't coming to mind, but back to warm and stimulating. Is, is that why you get them in the rooms of prostitutes? Asking for a friend. Ah, who am I kidding? I don't have any friends. Violet has the shortest wavelength and the fastest frequency, and we recognize it as cool and calming. Wait, what? No, that's blue. Although, not you blue. Good blue. But who took away good blue's job? Is this a Pluto situation? Did someone change the definition of something and not tell me again? It was super annoying last time. Because I moved to planet Pluto, had it as my address and everything, and then none of my bloody Amazon packages turned up. They ended up going to that f***ing Disney dog. Enjoy my box of angry spiders, you stupid little mutt. I needed them for science. I don't think I have to describe what happens between these two colors. Well, good. I don't want you to. I don't want the actual information in my head being replaced with your ridiculous made-up woo version. I'm stupid enough as it is, thank you very much. I don't want to end up going blue like you because my circulatory system stopped working because my brain forgot to, like do a living. It's like a frequency change that gets shorter and faster as you move up the spectrum. This basic knowledge, believe it or not, is very important, but we're going to have to look at some other things first. Knowing what colors are very important? Well, I think my colorblind broskies and siskies will have a little something to say about that, you exclusionary dick. Didn't know you hated them all so much. Not cool, man. So what is a chakra? It's bollocks. Well, it's usually believed that the word chakra comes from the Sanskrit word meaning wheel, which is partly true, but not the whole story, and we'll get to that later on. See, I told you, bollocks. Because what's a wheel? A circle. And what's a 3D circle? A sphere. And what's another name for a sphere? A ball. And what have you got when you have more than one of them? That's right, a nice big shiny set of bollocks. So next time when you hear someone talking about chakras, you will instinctively know that they are talking a load of old bollocks. In our modern understanding though, a chakra is a wheel-like vortex spinning in a circular motion within the body. <sighs> no, in our modern understanding, chakras are intangible, untestable nonsense that once were used to explain how who mans worked and then they went and did a big science all over themselves, and finally came to the conclusion that none of this ancient horseshit is in any way at all accurate. And only total morons think that it is in any way, shape or form useful in its descriptions, and more importantly useful in its supposed functions. Hence this video. It forms a vacuum in the center that draws in energy on a vibrational level, and can draw in anything from color vibration to thoughts and feelings of other people that we come into contact with. Holy shit, people have vacuums in them. Well, this is a revelation. There I was, using a hoover, like a dumbass, when I should have just been using Hoomans to clean up all the crap in my house, by just rubbing them on the floor. On the end of a stick, of course, I wouldn't want to actually touch them. Right, just a sec, I'm gonna go test out this great discovery. Yeah, no, it doesn't work. Now my house is just covered in blood, vomit and tears. Well, more than usual anyway. Flipping humans, always so damned useless. So in essence, chakras are energy points or centers that run vertically from the top of your head down your spine. Um, if I remember rightly, that top of your head one is supposed to actually be outside your body. You know, because it's bullshit. So I am intrigued as to why you might have changed that. Probably something to do with the fact that even morons might think, wait a minute, how the hell does that work? Pretty sneaky, blue boy. But you can't just pull a fast one on me like that. I'm too fat to go fast. Or, you know, from the bottom all the way up. Don't you dare talk about my bottom. You haven't earned the right to talk about my glorious behind, you blue son of a bitch. Or blitch. Think of them like pools of energy in our body. When left to their natural state, they will flow seamlessly. Oh, so it's a bit like a bladder. I mean, if I'm not holding it in constantly, then I just end up pissing all over everything. It's not a control issue, mind. It's just, well, you try keeping 17 litres of whiskey at bay. That shit will get out of your body one way or the other if you let it. I, however, choose to keep it all in until I absorb all its whiskey goodness. 
but life is messy and stuff like emotions, abuse, and bad experiences get in the way. And much like moss or algae, it blocks the creek from flowing. God damn, this is some grade A gibberish. There are pools of water slash energy in them and they get chocked full of garbage because emotions. And that's not to say that emotional crap can't mess you up, but these pools are all over your body and not like in your brain where your you lives. Ah, you caught me. I'm quoting Airbender on that last bit. Well, aside from the fact that I thought you were quoting various fictional sources throughout this entire nonsensical thing, don't you take this shit at least somewhat seriously? You know, think it's legit real. Your audience certainly buys into it. I actually have a number of subscribers who found their way to you while moving away from mainstream religion and got to you before something a bit more sensible like me. And if you are less sensible than me, well, that's quite the damnation. And you're sat there pulling shit from kids' TV shows. The hell is wrong with you? Even by your own standards, that's just irresponsible as f**k. And yes, Avatar is absolutely awesome. I don't deny that. But that doesn't mean you should be quoting it in your pseudo-religious mumbo-jumbo, you goddamn hack. Now, despite how you look at it, there are seven, eight, or 13 primary chakras. Oh, for crying out loud, 13 now, apparently. What are they even for? And depending on how you look at it, Oh, like how in reality, depending on how you look at it, sometimes gravity pulls you toward the Earth, but if you look at it different, it launches you into space. Because that's how anything works. Although, to be fair, the Australians are looking at it upside down and they don't fall off, so maybe he's onto something. As well as over hundreds of smaller, minor ones that are scattered throughout the body along certain channels known as axiotonal lines. Ugh, you are giving me the conniptions. Fine, I'll say it. I didn't want to, but I have to because this is a bugger ton of claims at this point. But what evidence do you have that there are freaking hundreds of weird micro energy dealies throughout our bodies? What single piece of factual data do you have to back that up? Because I have this funny and pretty damn strong feeling it's absolutely whiskey pissing nothing. We'll cover the 8 and 13 later on though. So for right now, let's stick with the basic 7. Saying that is like... We will cover the Formula 1 high-spec dragon racing later, but for now, let's stick with the basics of the lower league and unicorn racing. That's what you sound like, you absolutely mad blue bastard. This shit is so ridiculous. As we understand it, your chakras are kind of like the etheric motor of the soul. I'm just gonna let that sit there for a second as the big smelly brown stain on reality that it is. As we understand it, Chakras are kind of like the etheric motors of the soul. You know, I always have to wonder, does he write this shit down, or does it just fall out of his face like the word vomit it is after he spent too long eating all the vacuous nonsense that he can find from the internet? Because I swear, when I wrote that sentence on my computer without air quotes around it to protect it, it tried to format itself and throw itself out of a window. Thankfully, I caught it and told it that everything was going to be okay. And then got back to writing this, what is effectively torture porn for that stupid trusting bastard. Not only do your chakras draw in energy, each and every chakra radiates an energy or vibration and governs over a major organ or gland connected to other body parts that resonate at the same frequency. We've got vibrating organs now, have we? I'm pretty sure that a shaking pancreas is a serious medical condition and not a delightfully whimsical description of how our body works. And my liver is way too far gone to even attempt any sort of movement, so that's clearly bullshit too. To have balanced and aligned chakras will make you happier, healthier, and more in tune with yourself. Come on, dude, if this were true and you knew how to make yourself happy, I really don't think you would need to tell lies to strangers on the internet. I mean, that's what I do, and it's because I'm not happy that I do that. That and because it's hilarious, but you aren't funny, at least not on purpose, so you need to stop. When one chakra center is out of sync, it may eventually affect the organs and glands that it's connected to and cause the chakras neighboring it to also go out of sync, causing a chain reaction and many bodily imbalances. Look, Dr. Dumbass, I know you think that this shit makes you sound clever and a surface level analysis might make one think, well, yeah, when people feel like shit, they don't feel well in general. But this is saying that if you get the wrong feeling in one chakra gland, 
then you could end up breaking a completely different, unrelated part of your body. And put simply, this does not happen. A chakra can become out of balance when it is overactive, underactive, or possibly congested or blocked. This is almost always felt on a mental, emotional, or physical level. That's not how it works. And this kind of pseudo-scientific gibberish is convincing people that they can cure their lung cancer by balancing their woo gland just right instead of, you know, going to a pigging real doctor. Like an oncologist. Yeah, that's right. I know the names of types of doctor. I have a big boy brain now. Unlike Blue here, who I am not convinced has a brain. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoon Star Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships, and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-